Because I don't really know where to begin explaining my experience, which would take thousands of pages such as this one, I'll try to do it in a very simplified manner. Things began to happen a few months before the disaster, with me seeing dead people and hearing voices right before going to bed, relaxing, but not sleeping. This section would require many pages to describe, so I'll go right to the incident day. September 3rd, 1990, at 3.15 p.m. local time, when my friend was taking my car back from Quebec City. She lost all control of it at some point. We also got into a head-on accident with another vehicle. I was immediately projected from my body and was looking at my body and my own body inside the car at that time. I spotted a small fire in the exhaust pipe, but it wasn't very serious at the moment. We were both still and seemed to be dead, except for her body. She didn't seem to have a spirit. At the time, I recall wanting to notify my family and relatives about the tragedy and that my existence was coming to an end, to say my goodbyes. I was instantly next to them. It was now the middle of the day, and there would be another day. My parents and friends couldn't see or hear me because I could travel across time. Instead of seeing and living while I was dead, I began to believe there was something more in store for me. I simply let go of myself, and there was no trench in my inst- despite the fact that I recall anticipating one from reading several independent stories in the past. However, there are none. I entered a dark room with no one around me, but I was unconcerned. There is a lot of peace there. My whole life began to unravel in front of me as if I were in a movie being broadcast on a screen. From childhood to adulthood, it felt very genuine. I was staring in a mirror, but it was greater than a 3D movie because I could sense the sensations of the people I dealt with throughout the years, and I could feel the pleasant and negative emotions I caused them to experience. I could also see that the nicer I made them feel, the better I helped them feel. And the better their feelings were as a result of me, the more credit karma I would receive. And that, as in a bank account, the bad guys would take part of it back. But to my understanding, it was just like a karma account. The more karma points I earned, the more access I had to a better region or a better location. It was the understanding that I possessed. A life presentation is shown at the final scene. For a brief while, everything was pitch dark, almost as though in a genuine movie before the lights were turned on. I realized that I earned a place as far as what we call paradise as a result of this understanding, even though I had no idea what heaven was or what it was like. I had a beautiful sense of tranquility that grew stronger with time. It's a wonderful sensation. I noticed a glow in ways ahead of me in the darkness. It drew my attention. There's no way. I told myself that I was getting even closer to it. The sense of tremendous tranquility grew stronger and better. In the actual world, I'm the type of individual who likes delving into the details to figure out how things work. I didn't want to rush and instead wanted to figure out what was going on. Then I went into orbit. That's the greatest way to put it in terms of the light. It looked like a light cone. I heard a phrase, peace, happy, happiness, and love for all time. I was orbiting around this massive cone of light. I recall that for me, those five words were the most essential thing in the universe. And in order to join the light, I had to let go of everything else. I'm going to skip certain specifics since they're too long. The sensation of tranquility has been replaced by one of love. Something was going to prevent me from joining the light at the time, I remembered. And after more investigation, I discovered this was grudges I harbored against a few people. I needed to pardon them in order to cleanse myself of any ill feelings I might have harbored against them. I could just about hunch the desire to join the light now that I'd been granted permission to do so, but I was going to hold back to have a better look at the intricacies before going into the light. I also recall being near the base of the light source, 
After a given amount of time, I let go and bang like a love explosion. I got a fantastic feeling before entering the light, but it was still a sense I could describe in human terms. But there was no words to describe how I felt inside, except that I believed I was going to die because the sensation of love was so overwhelming. I couldn't believe I still could think that the way I appeared to have done on earth. And it was at the time that I began to giggle, thinking to myself, how can I die when I'm already dead? So send as much love as you can. I started because I believed that the light or intellect within it could comprehend what I was saying. There was nothing finer, I thought at the time, and increasing the love emotion may be perilous because it was far greater and greater than any idea of paradise I had ever had. And yes, more love, as I have stated. The overwhelming feeling of love grew even greater. I also noticed that the light had different levels. I realized at this point I had access to all of the universe's knowledge, and all I had to do was ask how fantastic I thought my initial question was. Is there any other way to live? I'm sure you already know the answer. If you don't, the answer is a resounding yes. My second question is if there are numerous planets with more advanced life forms than our own. The answer is there are thousands of planets that are further along in their evolution than the Earth. My final question is if there are numerous planets that are less evolved than Earth. Yes, thousands. Can I see how it looks like on a globe with a greater evolution to answer my fourth question? Yes, you've arrived. I was in another world in an instant, and I could see myself there. In the brightness, I can't recognize my body. I'm in the company of others, but I'm able to communicate with them. I felt it was fantastic that they were astounded to see me next to them. I was in some kind of city with level terrain and buildings that looked like big boxes with no windows or doors. They had a unique method of getting inside them. It wasn't critical for me to know, though. We weren't using speech to communicate, but thanks to telepathic brains, I was able to grasp each word in French. And I was aware that I was conversing with them in a different language while doing so. All of this was carried out automatically. They wanted to know where I was from. They wanted to view the stars I saw from my planet in my thoughts. The end outcome was satisfactory. They also inquired as to where I was born on the planet, what areas I enjoyed visiting, and what I enjoyed doing on the planet. I told them I was born in Kaplan, Quebec, and I enjoyed scuba diving in Port Daniels in Newport. They needed to see what it looked like in my head, as well as a map of the places. They wished to show them. Again, the outcome was positive since I was able to mentally show them the map. They inquired as to where I got the energy to live. I could tell that they were talking about my health care in an unusual way. I informed them about the plants that we consume in this planet. Then they said, are you also consuming what was alive? Yes, I replied. We knew there were ancient civilizations, but it's not as awful as that, they said. They were taken aback by the fact that someone from such an early earth had come to visit them according to their own planet. I inquired of the person in command, or the person who represented the group. Where do you use your energy in order to stay alive here? They responded, as you do. We draw this from cosmic power. But instead of going via natural interfaces like you do, I'm going to do it directly. I also inquired about traveling to other realms. Yes, we do, said the same person. And he demonstrated with a spacecraft to me. It's almost like being in an airplane. However, there are no wings. I inquired as to what type of energy he used to travel thus far. We're employing a gravity generator to reach near unlimited speeds, he explained. I discussed the issue we faced on Earth as a result of gravitational forces at force. Our gravity generator, he said, has an impact on the entire spaceship, including the humans on board. As a result, neither the passenger nor the crew are affected by gravity. I recall that they were physically shorter than us and walked slowly in comparison to us. 
They didn't have any hair either. They wore a particular costume that conformed to their bodies as they were in a neutral part of them, as if it were a natural part of them. It was difficult to tell where they started and ended. They informed me that they would visit our planet in the coming years. But it's a long way away. I claimed that there would be no issues, but be cautious. I said farewell to them and thanked them for the data, among other things. I took a step back from them. I also took the opportunity to gaze at the sky at night. It wasn't like Earth, and there wasn't even a moon, yet the sky was stunning. Yet the sky was stunning, with many stars. A few years down the line, some locals, including a few police officers, witnessed a UFO in Kaplan, Port Daniel, and Newport, all on the same night, in separate towns, with the same description. It was reported in the daily newspaper in something that looked like the Concorde, but it didn't have wings, made no noise, didn't make a sound within the air, and was spotted only a few feet off the ground and didn't move for a time. I was residing in Montreal at the time, which was about 500 miles away. Returning to my narrative, I resolved to return to my birthplace and the beginning of everything, the light, after gazing at the lights from that planet. What a magnificent journey, I thought, when I considered how difficult it was for humans to reach the moon, and now that I was a and now that I think about it, traveling to the moon was as easy as walking down the road. It was also simple as traveling to the next hamlet to go to a planet roughly one hundred light years distance. I also inquired whether I might observe less developed planets while in the light's knowledge level. Yes, you've arrived. Some prehistoric cave guys with a lot of hair were hunting odd large beasts. I made an attempt to speak with them. However, there were no results. They couldn't see nor hear me because they couldn't see nor hear me. There wasn't much to see there. As a result, I resolved to return to the light. While I was there, I discovered that I couldn't tamper with primitive planets. It's also why there's a large space between planets. It acts as a buffer, keeping us from accessing their worlds, which would be extremely detrimental to their evolution because they must get through theirs alone, just as we must. Because there's a minimum and maximum evolution allowed on Earth, we humans will be reincarnated on another, more advanced planet in a future existence. After then, the most developed and intellectual individuals on Earth will become the least evolved and basic person on a more sophisticated world. I considered posing several questions concerning Earth, such as how long life would endure in human years, and the answer is 3,587. See for yourself what would happen if I spotted anything as massive as a comet or an asteroid approaching. Humans were still on the planet at the time, and there was absolute terror on the planet, because researchers will know it is the end of all living things as a result, and they would not be able to see it far enough ahead of time to avert it. I set aside some time to explore around in the near future. I wasn't able to reclaim certain years or times since it would have influenced what should have happened in our progress. After telling my tales to a few individuals after 1990, the first year of the tragedy, I realized that there would be many more wars involving the United States, and I recall that it would begin in New York City, and that it would happen a few years from now, in 1990. I had no idea that it was the World Trade Center, or what you're exactly talking about, but I was certain it would be New York City, and that everyone on the planet would be aware about what would happen. It's now a part of 9-11's history. The following that, the East Coast will be hit the worst. A large city in the northwestern part will be hit, but the West Coast will be spared nearly entirely. As a result of it, I'm certain. I didn't even relocate to a large East Coast metropolis. Even if a corporation offered me a six-figure salary to begin with, I would decline. I recall having all the dates and timing for every activity in each day. I told myself that now that I was dead, I couldn't do anything. In any case, I found the end of the war to be much more terrifying because the lack of funding in space research and NASA would be, and NASA as a result, 
of disputes with several countries. Nobody can see something approaching Earth, some little asteroid that is large enough to wreak significant harm. The good news is that as a result of this occurrence, all nations will put an end to their hostilities and strive to work together rather than fighting. However, it will be too difficult to cancel what may have been prevented. From that point, the various nations will recognize the futility of war, and we shall collaborate for many coming years. There will be peace on earth at long last, but countless lives will have been lost that could have been prevented. I know it won't be long until we return to some more pleasant topics. I ascended to a greater level into the sunshine, which was amazing and full of love. Everything became possible, producing physical stuff and sharing the creative level with God, which is greater than the maximum of knowledge, or the level of formation as I call it. Yes, I realized it's difficult to believe, because I had come from a realm of unlimited love and beauty. I didn't like to return to earth. Nonetheless, I must have underestimated the light's infinite power, and at the moment, I made the decision that I wanted to return to Earth so that I could share this understanding with just as many users as possible. What I didn't realize was that a wish was made in the light at this level becomes a reality. What I didn't realize was that a wish made in the light at this level becomes a reality. When I made my request, I found myself being drawn towards the base of the life source, and as I gently emerged from it, I realized I could just see my body again. That's when I noticed my pal. She was approaching me as well as the light was behind me. She was totally clothed in white, as if she were a bride, and she was not walking. However, I had the sense that I was floating on my friend's journey. She was gently approaching me. I was about to collide with her and immediately lift my arms to avoid it. She did just like we moved closer along, our hands touching, and I was astounded by the sparks of light that emanated from them. When the components of our bodies merged together, our minds fussed together, and we were able to read one another's thoughts precisely and without error, despite the fact that it happened at breakneck speed. It was at this point that I convinced her that we weren't utilizing speech but telepathy and that we should conduct a test. I started talking to see if we could still use speech at this point and I realized I was using her gestures and vocabulary while having a conversation. However, this was taking an inordinate amount of time and we quickly reverted to our old manner of communicating completely with sentiment as she explained to me that she'd been remaining in the light and that her time on this planet had come to an end. She was aware that I was going back to Earth and that I would never ignore this experience because it was so much nicer than what we had previously experienced physically. She was aware that I was going back to Earth and that I would never ignore this experience because it was so much nicer than what we had previously experienced physically. The sensations of love were becoming more faint and I could see the bigger picture of everyone on Earth including wars, greed, rage, bigotry, and so on. As I got closer, I became very upset by the situation. Immediately, I was back in the automobile, surrounded by flames. When I turned over and I saw my friend's body, I realized she wasn't there anymore. I had barely enough time to escape the truck before the flames reached me because of the light. My buddy did an autopsy, and it was determined that she was deceased before the flames reached her. Despite the numerous fractured bones, my recovery had been nothing short of amazing. My development astounded the attending physicians. I've come back with a few unmatched abilities and powers. 